All right, good afternoon and welcome to the Committee on Land Use. I am Councilman Rafael Salamanca, Chair of this Committee. I would like to welcome my esteemed colleagues for joining us today. We've been joined by Council Members Rivera, Chair Lewis, Brooke Powers, Bacher, Krishnan, Borelli, uh, and we have on uh, via Zoom, we have uh, Council Members Sanchez and Hanks, and we've also been joined by Council Member Julie Wong. And I would also like to thank Chair Lewis and Riley for their work on our two subcommittees. But before we begin today's meeting, I would like to recognize the committee council to review the hearing procedures. Thank you, Chair Salamanca. I am Arthur Ha, counsel to this committee. Council members who are physically present and who would like to ask questions should indicate so verbally while council members joining remotely. Who would like to ask questions or make remarks should use the Zoom raise hand function. Chair Salamanca will recognize members to speak. We ask all participants for your continued patience uh, should any technical difficulties arise. And Chair Salamanca will now continue with today's agenda. Thank you, Council. Today we will vote to approve the pre-considered LUs related to applications numbers G220024 SCR for a 252-seat early childhood center site selection in Council Member Hanks District in Staten Island. We will also vote to approve with modifications LUs 126 through 134 for the Innovation, Innovation Queens Deve redevelopment proposal related to property in Council Member Wands District in Queens. As originally proposed, the application requested approval of a number of related actions, including zoning map amendment, a zoning tax amendment, and a number of special permits establishing a large scale general development pursuant to various bulk use sign parking and loading regulations. A modification will facilitate the conversion of office and community facility space into additional housing and lower the density on parcels within the rezoning area and adjacent to but not part of the Innovation Queen's large scale development. These ad adjustments will result in transitional areas that take into account existing patterns of lower and medium density residential uses in the neighborhood. These actions will facilitate the development of a series of mixed use buildings and publicly accessible open space with over 3,100 housing units. As negotiated by the council, the project is comprised of approximately 55% market rate residential units and 45 affordable units as the applicant and administration have agreed to incorporate the development of HPD finance affordable housing buildings and city FEPS vouchers in addition to the requirement of MIH option one. We will also vote to approve the modifications pre LUs 135 through 138 for the Livonia 4 redevelopment proposal related to property in council member Barron's district in Brooklyn. As proposed, an application requested approval for a zoning map amendment, zoning tax amendment, UDAP appro approval, and related disposition approval, and an amendment to the Bronxville 2 urban renewal plan. Together, these applications will facilitate the development of four mixed-use buildings with approximately 499 affordable housing units, ground floor commercial space, and community facility space along Livonia Avenue in Brooklyn. A modification will be to strike MIH option two while retaining option one and to add the deep affordability option. We will also vote to approve LUs 141, 142, 145, and 146 for the innovative urban village development proposal related to property in Council Member Barron's district in Brooklyn. As originally proposed, the application requested a zoning, the applicant requested a, zone, a requested a zoning map amendment, zoning tax amendment, and large scale special permit and parking special permit. Regarding the 1571 McDonald Avenue item on today's agenda on the pre-considered LUs 139 and 140, I noted that the application related to these items were withdrawn by written correspondence from the applica applicant today, November 21st, and therefore pursuant to council rules 11.60B, the applications are void. The council may vote to file these items at a later date. I make a motion recommending that we do so to remove them from our calendar. Finally, regarding the 280 Bergen Street items on today's agenda, I note that in accordance with section one, um, 11 dot, dot 10 f of the council rules, I am calling up the Committee LUs 143 and 144 related to the 280 Bergen Street rezoning proposal in Council Member Restless District in Brooklyn. These items were heard in our zoning subcommittee on October 25th and are called up today to enable the committee and the, and the council to act within the time limits for council action pre 
prescribed by law. The 280 Bergen Street rezoning proposal seeks approval for a rezoning map amendment to rezone existing M1-2 zoning district to an R7D slash C2-4 and R7A zoning district and a related zoning text amendment to map an MIH program area. A modification will be to strike MIH option two while retaining option one and to add a deep affordability. So before we vote, I would like to take a moment to recognize any of my colleagues who wish to ask questions or make remarks. I will recognize first Council Member Julie Wan. Good morning, everybody. We've got a full house in here. Such great to see, so great to see so many friends in the room. So good morning, my name is Julie Wan. I'm the local council member for Law and City, Sunnyside, Woodson, Astoria, uh, which Innovation Queens is proje uh, proposed to be set in. From day one, I've stood with my community in demanding deeper affordability from Innovation Queens. When the developer certified this project, it was majority luxury development and offered the minimum 25% affordability. The original plan offered only the minimum affordability for the neighborhood and threatened to displace our immigrant and working class residents who have lived, worked, and spent their entire lives here. But because we held the line, the Innovation Queens project has doubled the number of affordable units than initially offered from 711 to 1,436 affordable units. In our neighborhood, I never once com compromised on the level of affordability at MIH option one, as these homes have to be accessible to the current residents of the neighborhood. And despite all of the pressure to switch to MIH option two or option three, I did not because I've heard the voices of the residents who have been advocating to ensure that they can remain in the neighborhood that they love. As a result, we have secured a project that with unprecedented private investment will deliver um, 1,436 permanent affordable apartments, including 657 deeply affordable units for formerly homeless and extremely low income, including 142 supportive housing units, 157 rental voucher units, specifically for our unhoused neighbors. In addition to this historical level of deeply affordable housing, I am proud to have negotiated other immense gains for our community, including a $2 million anti-harassment and anti-displacement fund to provide legal protections for local tenants, relocation assistance for current residents and businesses, multilingual application assistance for affordable housing, and much more. To tackle our city's affordable housing crisis systemically, we must implement comprehensive citywide planning which prioritizes the New Yorkers we have excluded from the process far too long. But until then, I will continue to look at my district holistically when it comes to land use to ensure that I'm having district-wide comprehensive planning for my district, pushing for neighborhood rezonings and neighborhood planning and neighborhood studies, as well as continuing to build community power with the coalitions that exist today for housing organizing. The council, in partnership with the mayor and the speaker, must make afford solving the affordable housing crisis their top priority and put real investments into repairing and preserving NYCHA, developing and operating more social housing, expanding community land trusts, and pushing the state to grow successfully, successful limited equity co-op programs such as the Mitchell Lama co-op that we have in Woodside. In District 26, we will always prioritize community needs over profit, and as a community, we have set a new precedent for building affordable housing on private land. And I commend and thank each community member and elected official for remaining steadfast and standing with us. I thank Congresswoman Nidia Velasquez, Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney, Congresswoman Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez, State Senator Michael Gianaris, State Assembly Member Zora Mamdami, State Assembly Member Jessica Gonzalez Rojas, Public Advocate Jumani Williams, Council Member Tiffany Caban, Council Member Shaker, Shaker Krishnan, Council Member Kristen Richardson Jordan, Council Member Sandy Nurse, Council Member um, Shahana Hanif, Council Member Christopher Marte, as well as all of my other council colleagues who held the line with me, which allowed me to negotiate to the best of my abilities, despite so many others being critical, telling me to stop negotiating when I had time on the clock. And without the community power and the community advocacy from our local organizations under the coalition of Astoria Not For Sale, none of this would have been possible. So I want to thank the local advocates, CAV, um, for organizing Woodside on the Move, Youth on the Move, Western Queens Community Land Trust, Muslim Organizing Collective, Astoria Welfare Society, Astoria Tenants Union, Malika, Justice for All Coalition, and all the other neighbors who came out 
to push and push for greater affordability levels, as well as former elected officials, uh, former borough president Sharon Lee, former city council members Ben Kalos, Carlos Manchaca, and Costa Constantinides for all of their support during our fight. We know that as part of a negotiation that this is a compromise, but we have fought the best of our abilities in tandem with all of our community members to get the best in the parameters that we can get. And I am proud to say that 1,436 affordable units, specifically for supportive housing, as well as extremely low income housing, as well as a historical win for getting commitments for project-based vouchers for the formerly homeless, is something that we cannot say no to because we need to make sure that we are housing our most vulnerable neighbors. And I am proud to say today that in partnership with everybody on this, in this room, from the council to the speaker's office to the mayor's office and the developer team, that we have come to a place where we can, we have come to a place where we are saying on private land, we are, po we are going to be able to house home, formerly unhoused neighbors in this in this new development. So thank you so much for all of your support and I look forward to continuing and I'm hopeful that the Carpenters will continue to be a part of this conversation so that we can all end with not just jobs but also for affordable housing for our formerly homeless neighbors. Thank you. Congratulations, Council Member Long. Uh, are there any other members who wish to speak? All right, seeing none. I now call for a vote with support of the local council members to approve the modifications LUs 126 through 134, LUs 135 through 138, and LUs 143 and 144 to adopt a motion to file LUs 139 and 140 and to approve the preconsidered LUs related to applications G220024, SCR, and LUs 141, 142, 145, and 146. Will the clerk please call the roll? Good afternoon, William Martin. Committee Clerk, Roll Call Vote Committee on Land Use. All items are coupled. Chair Salamanca. Aye or no? Moya. I vote aye. Thank you. Rivera. I vote aye. Lewis. Brooks Powers. Aye or no? Bacher. Aye. Krishnan. Aye or no? Sanchez. Councilmember Sanchez. Hey, on all. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you, Councilmember. Thank you. Yes. Borelli. Aye. By a vote of nine in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. All items have been adopted as indicated by the chair. I would like to thank members of the public, my colleagues, and your staff, and council staff, and the soldier in arms for attending today's hearing. We will leave the roll open for five minutes. Actually, so we're just going to open up again. I'm going to allow uh, Councilmember Lincoln Russell who wants to make a statement on this project. Firstly, I want to congratulate Councilmember Juan on negotiating a like, truly impressive outcome in Innovation Queens. This was one of the harder land use issues to wrestle down, and you did a really impressive job and delivered for folks in Queens and across New York City, and, and I think inspired us all to push harder. Uh, I want to just take a moment today to uh, celebrate a rezoning in District 33. Uh, we have 450 units of housing coming to Brownstone, Borham Hill. Uh, we need to maximize opportunities for new housing across New York City, but especially affordable housing. And in this development with 450 units, fully half of these units, uh, close to 225 units, are going to be affordable and truly affordable to our community. The vast majority of these 225 affordable units are gonna be at 60% AMI and below. Uh, this is the first ULERP application that's certified after uh, taking office uh, for me. And I think we've developed a new model that I really hope to be able to replicate across our district. And you know, in this ULERP, we brought together community leaders and stakeholders to meet consistently with the development team. So two of our NYCHA TA presidents, Two of our representatives from Community Board 2, the Borham Hill Civic Association president, 
all met on a recurring basis with the developer to give our feedback and ensure that the real priorities in our community were incorporated into this project. And I'm proud to say that they have been. When the developer approached me about this project last fall, we, uh, we realized that there are two parking lots that the developer controls for the next 41 years. But these two parking lots are actually city on property. And I said to the developer, if you want to rezone your property, then you need to relinquish control of these two city-owned lots so that we could see them redeveloped for 100% affordable housing. And that's exactly what happened. The city has retaken control of these two parking lots, and we are turning them into 150 units of deeply affordable housing, senior housing and, family, and housing for families in our community. Uh, we, all, you know, we also got the developer to agree to go above MIH in their contributions at the site, so uh, there'll be additional units that are uh, a part of this development project at 80% AMI for our community. Uh, we've ensured the community preference for the affordable housing will go to both residents of Community Board 2 and Community Board 6. We have three large public housing developments in CB6 that otherwise wouldn't have benefited from any of the affordable housing that's uh, located just across the street from those public housing developments. One of the things, though, that I'm most proud of, and, and this is unfortunately one of, was, this was one of the biggest vulnerabilities of the Gowanus neighborhood rezoning, is that the supermarket that serves the 2,000 NYCHA apartments in the Gowanus area, the supermarket was a soft site in the Gowanus rezoning. So we were going to lose the Seatown supermarket as a result of the Gowanus neighborhood rezoning, which you, for those who know Borham Hill, this deeply gentrified area, there's no other place for these, neighbor, these low-income neighbors to be able to buy their basic necessities. And in this new rezoning at 280 Bergen, we've ensured that a supermarket of comparable size to the Seatown supermarket and that will also be deeply affordable is going to be built as a part of this project so that residents of Gowanus and Wyckoff Gardens and Warren Street will have an affordable place to shop for years and years to come. And something else that I'm very proud of in this project, not only are we turning these two uh, parking lots into 100% affordable housing, but we've gotten the developer to submit a parking waiver so that zero new parking spots will be built as a part of this project. This is among the most transit-rich locations in the city of New York. It's a five-minute walk from a dozen train lines, and, not, and we are not building one additional parking spot in this 450-unit development. This was also the first project that was subject uh, by law to the racial impact, to the new racial impact study law, and it showed that we need to build affordable housing at lower AMIs uh, to better address the socioeconomic and racial disparities in our district. And that's why we went with MIH option one and ensured that overwhelmingly the affordable housing that's built here, about 75% of the units, will be at 60% AMI and below. Uh, there's going to be great community facility space. We've made a preference, we've uh, included uh, priorities around local hiring commitments on green infrastructure, all of this is reflected in the community benefits agreement. We are not taking the developer at their word, we never do. We are signing a contractual agreement between the Fifth Avenue Committee, the Borham Hill Association, and the developer to ensure that each and every one of these promises are absolutely kept. Um, and I really want to thank the community leaders who have been a part of this process with us. Uh, Wyckoff Gardens Community, Ten uh, Wyckoff Gardens Nitro Tenant Association President Valerie Bell, Warren Street Tenant Association President Joanne Brown, the Borham Hill uh, Civic Association President Howard Collins, the Fifth Avenue Committees uh, Sabine and Michelle De La Us, um, representatives from Community Board Two, Daughtry Karstafen, who's the co-chair of the Land Use Committee, and Sid Meyer, who chairs the Transportation Committee. They have all made this project so much better. And I really want to thank my staff, who did a phenomenal job here. Uh, Arvin Sinwani is our Land Use Director and is like the smartest 22-year-old I've met in a very, very long time. Uh, he guided this project and did a terrific job. Our Chief of Staff, Marianne Alexander, guides us through everything that happens in our office, and I'm uh, profoundly appreciative to her. I want to thank Brian uh, and Julia and the team at Council Land Use and Paris for putting up with me when I can be a pain in the ass. You guys are all great, and I appreciate you. Um, and from the development side, Mark Weprin, Jay Siegel, Rich Dillon, appreciate all of your help, and especially want to thank the Fifth Avenue Committee. Um, Adam uh, helped negotiate the CBA for us, and Michelle guided that process. You know, these projects often feel like they're losing. Members, I'm lose. sorry, we have to move on. Okay, I'll just, last sentence. I'm sorry, this was an important project for our community, but these projects often feel like they're a law everybody's losing. And this is one where the priorities of our community have actually been incorporated into the development process, and I'm really proud to support it. Thank you, Chair Salamanca. Thank you, and congratulations on your project, Council Member. Um, I'm going to open up the roll again, uh, Clerk.
Yes, <clears throat> Councilmember Riley. I will. I don't know. Thank you, code. Is, excuse me. The vote is now currently at ten in the affirmative. All right. Thank you. Uh, we will leave the roll open for five minutes for Councilmember Mealy. Thank you. I would also like to thank uh, my team, Carolina, Chief of, my, Carolina Gill, my Chief of Staff, Isaac Blazenstein, my Land Use Director, Jenna Lang, my Comms Director, Kevin Koprovsky, our Deputy Chief of Staff, and all of the Central Staff who have been so patient with me answering all of my questions at the crack of dawn till 6 a.m. Um, Paris Strotter, Brian Paul, James Catone, and I also want to give a shout, shout out to ANHD, Chris Walters, and Alex Fennell. Lincoln, Council Member Wrestler reminded me to thank my team. Thank you. <laughs>
All right, we're opening up the roll now. Council Member Mealy. Well, may I explain my vote? Yes, Council Member Mealy, to explain her vote. Um, I would just want to take a min minute to to con. Yes, I just want to congratulate my colleagues for getting the best that they could possibly get out of this land use proposals, and I want to vote aye on all. Thank you. Final vote now on all items on today's land use agenda are adopted 11 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. Thank you. This meeting is hereby adjourned.